got my wife a belated Valentine's gift, a hot air balloon trip over the USA. Today, I'm going to recap a 2011 action sport film called Warrior. Tommy Ridley visits his pops, Patty, after 14 years. The house lacks a feminine touch, and Patty says there are no more women for him. Must be hard to find a woman who can take a punch these days. Patty offers Tommy a coffee, but he just wants to have a drink with him. Patty is a recovering alcoholic and will soon hit the 1,000-day mark. Tommy turns the whole mood on Patty being an abusive husband to his mother, and Pops can barely contain himself. Brendan Conlon, Tommy's brother, is turned into a princess on his daughter's birthday. His wife Tess is a little upset with him for going over the family's budget with the gifts. When the party's over, she heads off to her job at a pub, leaving Brendan in charge of putting the girls to bed. If he waits for her tonight, she promises him some action for his good behavior. At Colt's gym, a report airs on MMA Live about billionaire Riley hosting an MMA Super Bowl named Sparta with a $5 million tournament where winner takes all. Tommy walks into the gym where he used to train and gets a monthly subscription. He notices the poster about the Sparta tournament. Tommy is working out alone and notices someone nicknamed Mad Dog beating a chump and gloating about it. The gym owner, Colt, asks to get another fighter and says he will pay him $200. Tommy says he can fight Mad Dog, but is turned down. As he is about to return to his bag, Mad Dog taunts him and Tommy turns around and asks Colt again to let him fight. Colt says if anything happens, it's his fault. Since he signed a waiver, it will not be a problem. The fight starts with Mad Dog on the back foot. One of the spectators records the fight as Tommy takes Mad Dog apart. He drops him to the ground, and after several knee strikes to the face, he takes him down with a knockout punch, not so mad after all. Tommy turns to Colt and asks for the 200. The crowd is in disbelief at how easily he had won. Brendan works as a physics teacher. He explains Newton's second law in an interesting experiment. His class loves him. After school, Brendan visits the financial advisor, who tells him that his mortgage payments are behind. He had to mortgage his house to pay for his daughter's heart transplant. The advisor seems to take the whole situation lightly, as he tells Brendan that he has 90 days to pay off the debt. Brendan will not be able to do that, so the advisor suggests he file for bankruptcy or face foreclosure. Patty is watching old footage of young Tommy in a wrestling match. He had won seven gold medals at the time. Patty was, in everyone's opinion, is a controversial coach. Colt is at his front door looking for Tommy. Patty inquires what he has to do with him. Patty just says if you want to know anything about Tommy, you'll have to ask him yourself and closes the door. Brendan is on the phone with his wife and says he's going to take a night shift as a bouncer at a club. In order to earn extra money, he actually takes part in a parking lot m and fight with the mutilator Mike. The fight starts with Mike looking nimble and landing a nice punch. Brendan quickly responds with a few of his own and manages to drop him to the ground. With repeated punches to Mike's face while he's down, Brendan wins the fight. The crowd boos him as their favorite has lost. The organizers tell Brendan that he has to win two more fights to take home the prize. In the morning, Brendan comes home and Tess is shocked to see him so beaten up. He admits that he lied about his job as a bouncer and that he has gone back to his old antics. He had promised Jess not to do anything like that again, but they are running out of options, considering their payments. She promises that they will find a solution, but she wants him to give up fighting. Tommy visits his pops at a diner and tells him about the tournament where the winner takes all, and he wants Patty to train him. The devil you know is better than the devil you don't, says Patty, while referring to Colt and himself. He agrees to train him just like in the old days, but he has to drop the pills. Patty knows his son well. At school, everyone is talking about teacher Brendan and that one of the students saw him in an m and fight. When he enters the class, they notice his black eye and confirm that it's true. He begins class, but the principal, Joe, calls him into his office. There, Joe reveals that the superintendent is coming and demands an explanation. Brendan used to fight for a living in the UFC. Guess he forgot to add that to his resume. The superintendent arrives as Joe says to just swear it will not happen again if Brendan wants to keep his job. 
At home, Brendan confesses to Tess that he has been suspended as a teacher until the next semester, without pay. To keep them afloat, he proposes to take on low-level fights again. She resists, but feels there is no better solution. Brendan visits the gym and catches up with his old acquaintance, Frank. Frank apologizes for being out of touch and is happy to see him. Brendan tells his story about the bank wanting to take away his house and discreetly asks Frank to train him to get back on his feet. Frank just spills the facts to him. Brendan is a teacher who did not perform well even at his best. Frank does not think he has what it takes to fight real fighters and not just some randoms in parking lots. Brendan says that he really needs it and that Tess knows about it. Frank agrees, but he will not be able to train him all the time because he's busy training with Marco for the Sparta tournament. That is good enough for Brendan. In the evening, Patty visits Brendan, who is not happy to see him. Patty admits that today is the day he's 1,000 days sober, and he just wants to share a meal together, but Brendan doesn't want to do anything with him. If it's a special day for you, doesn't mean it's a special day for me. He walks away but stops when Pop says Tommy is back. He's at his house and they are training together. Brendan is speechless because Tommy has not mentioned anything to him, his brother. He is also angry that they are training as if nothing happened. Tommy has always been Pop's favorite son because he was much better at fighting, but even then he never trained Brendan, and that still hurts. Patty asks him to forgive him and make room in his heart. Brendan forgives him, but he doesn't trust him. In cold blood, he closes the door on him. Tommy runs to the gym, and Colt tells him that he got him into the Sparta tournament. Later he calls a woman to see how she is doing, and reminds her that he has not forgotten his promise. Tommy had served in the army with her husband and had promised him to take care of his wife when he died. Both Tommy and Brendan are trained, and the news flash about the Sparta tournament and its uniqueness. There will be only one winner out of 16 fighters. A fighter from Russia, Koba, is in the mix. He has never lost a fight. Tess notices the news about the Sparta tournament on TV and the guy everyone is watching, Koba. Brendan spars with Marco, Frank's top contender for Sparta, and Marco taps out. Four weeks of training pass, and on one particular day, Frank calls an ambulance because Marco has had an accident. At the hospital, Frank is told that Marco will not be able to participate in the fight. Brendan approaches Frank and tells him that he can take Marco's place. Frank is hesitant, but agrees to make some calls and see what he can do. The next day, Brendan receives a call from Frank telling him that he got him into Sparta. Tess is furious because he made this decision all by himself. It's not about the money, she's worried that he'll end up paralyzed or worse, killed. Brendan says that if he doesn't try, the bank will take the house away from them in three weeks. Brendan wants Tess to support him, but she refuses to see him fight again. The Sparta Super Bowl is in full swing, the toughest middleweight fighters, are here to prove who is the strongest in the world. Brendan is not even considered a threat. Tommy and Brendan notice each other in the lobby, but Tommy decides to avoid his brother. News breaks that Tommy is not only a dark horse in the Sparta Cup, but also a hero in the Iraq War. One of the soldiers recognized him on a video and thanks him for saving his life. Tommy is not pleased about this and goes for a walk. Brendan and Tommy meet outside, they keep their distance and are tense. Brendan offers to have coffee, but his brother refuses everything and says he is good here. Tommy left the family 14 years ago and Brendan stayed for Tess. He shows Tommy pictures of his family, but he dismisses him. Tommy does not consider Brendan as his brother, after choosing Pops and a girl over him and his mother. Brendan says that he has forgiven Pops, just like he forgave Tommy and Mom. This sets Tommy off, you forgave us. Brendan was the one who didn't follow through with the plan. Tommy berates him for being full of crap and takes his leave. This is Sparta. The stadium is full with spectators to see the biggest mixed martial arts spectacle in history. Tommy competes in the first round. He is an overnight sensation and is even called a war hero, but still no one has any idea who he is. Tommy is Google proof. He skipped all interviews, has no sponsors, no entrance music, he did not even have his picture taken. Tommy breaks every rule and is still the darling of the audience. 
they touch gloves, and the commentators think Tommy is just here by luck. Tommy just walks up to his opponent and knocks him out. He leaves the cage like a boss without hearing the judge's verdict, another rule out the window. Brendan is the next fighter. Frank composes him. When Beethoven's music starts, Brendan appears and his pops tells him to win. The commentators say that Brendan is not a fighter and compare him to a goldfish thrown into a shark tank. The fighters touch gloves. The beginning of the fight is very different from Tommy's. Brendan gets beaten up and even thrown around, people supporting the teacher look on anxiously. Brendan gets caught in a chokehold. With 10 seconds left in the first round, Frank yells at him not to tap out. He just manages to stay afloat. Jess is worried as she waits for a text from her husband with the results and still refuses to watch the game. In the second round, they exchange punches, and Brendan manages to take his opponent in an arm lock. The commentators are a little shocked, and his pops just mumbles to himself that he can do it. His opponent taps out, and Brendan picks up his first win. Joe cannot control his excitement. Brendan shows great sportsmanship, and the commentators believe this was a fluke. Jess is still waiting impatiently and finally receives a message. I won. She is happy for him. Only eight fighters left, now seven, as Koba decimates his opponent. Jess cannot just sit and wait. She watches the fight as Brendan barely survives, and I mean actually survives the first round, until he takes his opponent in an arm lock and he taps. Another win for the physics teacher. Tommy, just like Koba, destroys his opponent in just 10 seconds. He goes straight into the final four. Tommy cannot sleep and Patty approaches him. He says he is proud of what he did for the soldier in Iraq. It turns out Tommy is not proud because he deserted from a unit and just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Patty really tries to get through to Tommy to try to understand him, but all he gets is the answer, spare the father routine, doesn't fit you, pop. The only thing Tommy and Brendan have in common is that they both have no use for Patty. Tommy sends Pops packing, saying he liked him better when he was a drunk. This breaks Patty. He reverts to his old self, muttering nonsense from his audio recording. Guilt-ridden Tommy hugs Pops and comforts him. When it is time for the fight and only four fighters are left, the crowd is one-sidedly chanting Tommy's name. Today Tommy fights without Patty. Mad Dog is his opponent. He wants to avenge the humiliation he experienced at their spurring session. He is confident that today Tommy is going down. After an intimidating stare, which Tommy does not return, the fight begins. Mad Dog is immediately knocked down, and Tommy simply destroys his face, with Colt screaming to end the fight. Another quick victory. Brendan's fight is against the Russian Koba, the clear favorite. The odds are 1,000 to 1 that Brendan will win. His wife Tess is here to cheer him on. They touch gloves, and the fight starts with Koba dealing massive damage to Brendan, who returns a punch but seems ineffective. Punches Brendan receives nearly knock him to the ground each time. Koba drops him and lands a few more before the first round ends. The second round starts in the same fashion, with Jess unable to watch. Brendan is tossed around like a rag doll. His students and Joe look on with concern. The second round comes to an end. Frank tells Brendan he will throw in the towel if they are not here to win. The third round is his last chance to knock Koba, or he will have no house to return to. With determination in his eyes, the third round begins. Koba pounds on him and puts him in a choke hold. Brendan turns the situation around by throwing Koba over him and has Koba in a leg lock. Koba taps out and the tournament favorite is out. Brendan goes to the finals against Tommy. Word has spread that Tommy had deserted as a soldier, and after today's Sparta final, he will be taken into custody. If he wins, he wants his fallen comrade's wife to get the winnings. Since Tommy changed his last name to his mother's, people only now realize that Tommy and Brendan are brothers, fighting in the finals of the biggest MMA fight ever. Brendan is someone who has the support of everyone around him, while Tommy fights alone. They start the fight, and as usual, with Tommy's precise and sharp movements, he beats Brendan up. Brendan is thrown to the ground and pelted with punches. After the end of the first round, Tommy lands a punch on Brendan, after which the crowd gets angry about the foul play. 
Frank calms Brendan down and gives him some pointers to move more and they continue round two. They engage in a fierce exchange of punches, which Tommy clearly wins as he keeps him pinned to the ground. At the start of round three, Tommy again manages to get on top of Brendan, but this time is quickly taken down in an insane arm lock. Tommy screams out in pain but does not give up, so Brendan dislocates his shoulder to end round three. Before the start of the next round, Brendan asks if Tommy's crazy to fight with a dislocated shoulder, but Tommy doesn't care, it's like he's punishing himself. Brendan refuses to fight him. Patty comes to the stadium and sees his two sons in a terrible situation. It's not a fight anymore, it's a one-man show with Brendan trying to get Tommy surrender, but no use, round four ends. Patty gives Brendan the approval he's needed all these years and still doesn't come to Tommy's corner as a trainer. Tommy, with no one on his side, is overflowing with emotions. At the beginning of the last round, Brendan, faced with Tommy's resistance, decides to finish the fight. He knocks Tommy down and chokes him, asks for his forgiveness, and tells him several times that he loves him, after which Tommy finally taps out. Brendan's wife, the kids, Joe, and everyone is overjoyed. Brendan won the $5 million tournament. He helps his brother up, hugs him, and tells him that he always wants to be there for him. The fight has brought a torn family back together. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.